works? Yeah. Okay, great. And then this is the pointer, right? No. No. So hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank a lot the organizers for the invitation and for, for organizing this very nice workshop. And also, I would like to thank the previous speakers of today's se session, because they did really fantastic works. And I will really rely on many things that they said on in my presentation. So my talk in this presentation, I will present a toy model for anomalous transport that its effect near the many body organization transition, and it's a work done in collaboration with Marco Schiro, who's also in Paris, uh, in Saclay and Collège de France. Okay, so uh, as you have already heard several times, so um, uh, isolated interacting disorder, quantum many body systems can fail to thermalize if subjected to strong enough randomness, even at finite energy density, and this phenomenon is called many body organization, and it's associated to a novel uh, quant quantum out of equilibrium dynamical phase transition, which has several uh, remarkable pro properties, like emergence of non-local integral motions, uh, boundary low uh, growth of entanglement entropy, and of course, breakdown of equilibrium statistical mechanics. And so it's a very robust uh, phase of matter. It has been observed in several different systems, and like for uh, including quantum spin chains and uh, interacting particle models on, on a random potential, li like this one, uh, this model uh, described by this Hamiltonian that we already uh, have seen several times today. And so just let's take this model as a reference one for the discussion to fix the idea. I imagine to start from a random uh, initial configuration and let uh, many body wave function evolve. One would observe that if the disorder is strong enough, the correlation function will not de decay uh, to zero, so the system will not reach thermal equilibrium. They will go to a finite plateau at infinite times, meaning that the system will keep memory of locally of the information stored on in the initial state for forever. And in the latest years, there is a lot of exciting progress have been made on this subject. Uh, especially uh, in establishing the existence and the properties of the MBL phase, which even uh, has been proven to exist for some specific model and under some, some minor, uh, say, assumptions, uh, minimal assumptions, but much less is known, uh, and there are mm, still many open questions about the nature of the transition between the MBL phase and the thermal one, and uh, uh, in particular, I mean, it, um, it's commonly expected that uh, sufficiently weak disorder, sufficiently strong interaction uh, against states should be fully ergodic and transport fully diffusive, just like in clean, non-integrable uh, metallic systems. But uh, it has been proposed that diffusivity and ergodicity, as we saw this morning, uh, may break down uh, before transport vanishes. And so there might be an intermediate phase, which is called the bed metal, where um, maybe, possibly, again, uh, function might be ergodic, not uh, delocalized, but non ergodic, and transport uh, um, highly heterogeneous. No, no, of course, of course. That's pre no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. In the, that's what uh, in the literature. Just what's uh, and precisely this model. I won't talk about ergodicity, but just about diffusivity. Okay, so um, uh, actually, the um, the interest on the delocalized side of the transition only started um, quite recently, like a few years ago, when actually it was observed that the properties uh, uh, of the say, let's, let's call this bad metal regime in a broad range of parameter preceding the MBL transition are, uh, in, in fact, very unusual. And in particular, it was shown that transport is subdiffusive and out of equilibrium relaxation is slow, anomalously slow and described by power laws with, uh, with exponents that gradually change when one approaches and the, uh, the transition, in particular with the dynamical exponent that diverges at the MBL transition. 
And these plots here show just just several examples examples from different several recent papers. And so just to show that this phenomenon is really robust, they, they've been found first just by solving numerically directly the self-consistent uh, Bascolinear Schuller equation. And then they were observed numerically, uh, numerical simulation on several different systems, and then also observed in uh, experiment with cold atoms. So an, an appealing uh, phenomenological uh, description or interpretation of this result has been proposed in terms of Griffith's effects, mainly uh, meaning that the, the low frequency response of this system in this regime is dominated by rare regions or rare realization of the disorder. And so basically the idea is that a uh, system uh, close to the MBL transition is highly inhomogeneous. It is made of patchworks of uh, locally thermal and locally insulating regions. And these regions affect dramatically transport uh, in 1D because quantum excitations uh, have to go, have to tunnel through broadly distributed effective barriers which act as kinetic bottlenecks and produce this subdiffusion, slow power relaxation and, uh, and anomalous spectral correlations. Okay, so the, the, the for, the fir for the first time that uh, description in of subdiffusive bed metal regime has been proposed in terms of Griffith effect, it was done in terms of classical effective models uh, like uh, a classical resistor capacitor model with power load distributed resistances or classical trap like models like the one you described glassy dynamics, classical glassy dynamics for instance. But then later um, uh, several um, uh, strong disorder normalization group approximations were mm, uh, proposed and studied to try to describe the entotic critical properties of the MBL transition and uh, uh, mm, basically, uh, this the first of these works. Basically, these first works were numerically implemented energy transformations transformations, uh, uh, which are designed to try to capture the interaction between these locally thermal, and locally insulating regions. And and although uh, these diverse proposition in the literature, they all differ a little bit one from another on the way the insulating segments and the thermal segments are identified and combined, uh, these approach are, this strong disorder energy approach are all based on the same idea that basically close enough to the MBL transition one can introduce effective models, effecti effective coarse grain models uh, which describe the formation of many body, uh, collective many body resonances that can destroy the insulating phase and these models are in general made of resonant locally thermal and locally insulating clusters which are described, which are just built on random matrices and described by a minimal set of parameters, like typ typical level spacings, effective bandwidth, and, and so on. And then, so the basic, the, uh, the main philosophy behi behind all that is that the MP transition should be universal. And so, uh, uh, one can define effective model like classical ones, uh, which, uh, the, um, uh, in which uh, independently on the microscopic, uh, uh, or, or I mean, they, they do not depend on the microscopic uh, structure of the different models. And then, uh, then building on the first on this first uh, numerical RG, then in the very, uh, very, very recently, some oversimplified but, uh, but analytically tractable toy, let's say toy RGs, have been developed and studied, and actually it was shown very recently and generally that one expects a coselitz like um, the coselitz et tables like uh, type of criticality if one includes the fact that the MBL transition is driven by avalanches and in this very recent paper actually this paper these people the authors uh, uh, revised all the numerical analysis did in the first numerical RG and they showed that actually is fully compatible with the coselitz uh, et tables uh, like RG flow However, all these approach, are, all these procedures are purely phenomenological. They are not based on any on any microscopic models, and and yet there is not. Although now it seems that uh, this this work is very general, there is not not yet a clear consensus on the, on a consistent picture for the critical point. So, in order to uh, try to overcome at least partially uh, these these issues, 
we try in this presentation we introduce a toy model, a toy uh, microscopic model that can be thought like a concrete microscopic realization of the coarse grained effective models introduced in the context of the strong disorder RG. Okay? So the model is described by this Hamiltonian and it's uh, schematically sketched here. So the first two terms of the Hamiltonian are just M identical copies of a 1D uh, tight binding model, Anderson tight binding model. Uh, and so the, 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 the index P labels the, the, the copies uh, of, the, of, the Anderson, uh, of the Anderson model, uh, and, the, and the index I labels the position along the chain from 1 to L. And then, so at, at each position of the chain, we have a layer containing these M sites, P from 1 to M, and these sites are connected by this last term of the Hamiltonian, which is a sparse uh, random matrix. And actually, more precisely, we will take precisely a random regular graph, which is the object something uh, described in the previous talk. So the, the connectivity matrix here will be just a sparse matrix with fixed connectivity and, and uh, on each layer. So this is an object that is uh, locally a tree, but has large loops and no boundaries. Yes. Yes, of course, it is very important that on each layer we need to take a different random regular graph because then for the analytic calculation, we, we, we want that if there is a link between these two sides in the large M limit, there is no link, no, no such link on the other layer. Otherwise, we can not write recursivization. Okay. So the epsilon i here are just uh, random on site energies taken uh, from a box distribution and independently distributed of, of with W. And uh, T is the interlayer hopping uh, and uh, in the X direction, say, and gamma is this intra intralayer hopping which connects two sites, P and Q, on the same layer, which are uh, connected uh, by the, e the, the realization on the layer I of the random graph. So in a certain sense, this is similar to a M orbital version of, of 1D Anderson model, but slightly different. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I see that you are a little bit perplexed. So I, I, I agree that the model could look a little abstract, but uh, it has a, a, I mean a, a simple physical interpretation. I, I, it's just a toy model, again. So uh, imagine this layer E, we think of it as a coarse-grained presentation for uh, uh, some local degrees of freedom of the original interacting model, like these sites uh, here in blue. So uh, the random regular should be thought of just as a, mm, a extreme simplified description of the Hilbert space for these local degrees of freedom, uh, which uh, is seen as a kind of local like structure. And so the, the a site is uh, like could be imagined as a, um, a many body configuration uh, uh, of the local degrees of freedom in some basis, and the uh, hoping T, like the transition rate between these body, many body configurations uh, among, uh, uh, between uh, na neighboring uh, blocks. Okay, so uh, in this sense, this is very similar in spirit to the models introduced in the strong disorder RG. Uh, okay, and uh, so again, this is the matrix representation of the model. It's just made of L blocks of M times M diagonal matrix matrices. So the diagonal blocks are just uh, minus gamma times the connectivity matrix of a random realization of the random regular graph and uh, shifted by the random on-site energies, epsilon i, on each, on each layer. And then these off-diagonal blocks connect one layer to the next, uh, just given by, the, by minus T times the identity matrix. And so uh, it is mm, known from previous studies that in absence of disorder, the random regular graph belongs to the universality class of, the, of GOE, with localized uh, eigenvectors and Wigner -Dyson, Wigner Dyson statistics of energy levels. So this gamma uh, perturbation can be thought as a local perturbation with the GOE matrix. And when this perturbation is increased, the model undergoes at the localization transition, so a transition from an insulating phase, which is, we yes? No, 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 I just say that it belongs to the class of the G. 
Yes, but just in the sense that the, the eigenvectors are fully localized, the eigenvalues are Wigner Dyson in absence of disorder. This boss is back, yes, but uh, the level, I mean, if I take just one block, the level are Wigner Dyson. That's what I'm, I'm saying. And I like a semicircle, although, I mean, this is just a picture. I know that it's not a semicircle, there are spots and so on, just, just to, to sketch. Okay, so uh, when I increase this coupling with the local geo perturbation, the system can, the, um, the Anderson interesting phase can be destabilized, and uh, uh, so uh, the intuition of how this happens, uh, in order to have an intuition, it's instructive to start from the, from the strong disorder case, so strong disorder limit, so if gamma is zero, we have just M copies of, of 1D Anderson models, and uh, so eigenfunctions are strongly exponentially localized around some specific positions of uh, chain, and, uh, and, and we have just m degenerate eigenvalues, which are just roughly given by the random energies. And then when we turn on the perturbation, it lifts the degeneracy and gives an effective spreading to these Poisson levels, and uh, so the, the, the density of state is made by a kind of superposition of small semicircles, uh, of L semicircles containing M levels each of uh, width proportional to gamma times the square root of the connectivity. Yes, yes, I'll take it to infinity uh, later. Yeah. And, and then, and then uh, the, these small semicircles are roughly centered around the, the random energies in the strong disorder limit, and one can imagine that resonances start to form when the, the edges of this semicircle starts to touch. Uh, and so, okay, this is how the system should be localized. And another way to understand the mechanism for localization is, is provided by the locator expansion. So, gamma equal to zero, so again, just standard 1D Anderson model, the green function between two points just expanded, can be expanded as a sum over all the possible paths between these two points. Uh, and since the weight of a path decrease exponentially with the distance in 1D only for scattering paths count in the sum and now when we turn the perturbation now a huge number of new directed paths appear because on each layer a particle can travel uh, as many steps uh, it wants in the layer before jumping to the next so just comparing these two expression we see that the basically the effect of gamma is to renormalize the bare random energies in this way, and of course this can enhance and amplify resonances because uh, it can create arbitrary large term in the sum if on the layers where the energies are very close to zero and in particular is smaller than k times gamma, this, uh, the, the, the perturbative expansion can explode. Okay? So on a chain of length L, the, the probability of find that finding at least one of these resonances happens at this stretch. And so uh, this, this mechanism suggests that actually in this model, the localization can be driven just by few, rare few uh, resonances that might be created for some specific realization of the disorder, which is very similar to the avalanche mechanism proposed recently in the, in the literature as a, meta a mechanism that destabilizes the MBL thing. Sorry? Yes. Yes. Sorry. I yeah, so gamma is the is this is the hoping is the just gamma times the connectivity matrix it should be taken very small. Okay, so, uh, so as I said, uh, so since we take a different random uh, different realization of the random regular graph on each layer, the, the whole graph is still uh, a tree like structure, although it is anisotropic, so one can write uh, in the M to infinity limit, exact recursive relations similar in, in spirit to the one that Constantine derived um, uh, for the diagonal elements of the green functions. And uh, so uh, in this case, so in order to write these equations, we need to define the some inter intermediate objects which are called the cavity green functions, which are the green function of on a certain side, say I, in absence of one uh, of a modified Hamiltonian uh, where the edge between the side tie and one of its neighbors has, has been cut. 
Okay, so now, due to the anisotropic structure of the lattice here, we have three kinds of green functions in absence of the left neighbors, the right neighbors, and one of the neighbors of the same site. Okay? And so we take m to infinite from the start. Uh, we didn't take any disorder in the plane, so each site of the plane is statistically equivalent, so our, uh, the system is translationally invariant in the m to infinite limit within each plane. And, uh, and also, since the system is already formally infinite in the transverse direction, we take the limit eta going to zero from the start. Um, and so in this in these uh, settings the, the the equation for the green function just for the cavity green function just becomes uh, become a system of 3l coupled equations and then once these equations are solved one can compute the green function of our hamiltonian of, of the starting of, uh, of the um, uh, so without cutting any okay and so now these terms in red here of the equations if we imagine that they are of these three equations, if we imagine that they are like modified on site energies, okay, these equations are exactly the same that one would, one would write for a purely, truly 1D problem, uh, 1D Anderson type banding Hamiltonian, but the presence of modified uh, energies, on site energies, which are given by this expression. So just these equations are the same, this 1, 2, and 3 are the same that one would write for this truly 1D problem, but now these modified energies are complex and are also strongly correlated because they must be determined self-consistently by this last equation that we hadn't used uh, up. Okay, so, uh, okay, so it turns out so the, the, the correlation at a certain distance between these modified energies uh, Given by it's given by this expression, and I'll show later on during the talk that at the critical point it becomes broadly distributed with a typical value uh, which stays finite at the critical point and decays exponentially with the distance over a typical localization length scale psi typical, but with power low tails with an exponent three half. Basically, this means that typical correlations are not enough to induce the localization because they are just short range. But there might exist rare few pair of sites uh, st strongly where correlation can be arbitrarily strong, and this site can. Uh, so again, this is related to the avalanche mechanism. This rare pair of sites where correlation are arbitrarily strong can induce the localization. So, and, and, and also the fact that these energies are complex uh, means that the local GOE perturbation acts locally as a thermal bath because it gives on each site i a kind of local source of dissipation. Okay, so now uh, we're going to study the metal insulator transition of this model systematically. So, for of course, gamma equal to zero, we have an Anderson insulator, and uh, uh, we want to know if this local perturbation, which is induced by the GOE coupling, the coupling with the G local GOE, can spread over the whole system or not. And the simplest way to do that is just to expand the real part of the green function in powers of gamma square, because they in the, the recursive equation they they only the, the, there is a clear uh, uh, power gamma square ca which enters uh, we, which um, appears when we turn on the, the perturbation. So we expand the real part of the green function in powers of gamma square, and then we just solve the equations for the bio, then check if the uh, perturbative expansion converges. And when it stops converging, converging, it just means that uh, the gamma perturbation is able to create spontaneously a stable non-singular probability distribution of the imaginary part of the green function. And the, the, the numerical results of this analysis, numerical meaning solving the recursive uh, equation for different realization of the disorder, it's uh, given here in this plot. So here I plot the probability of a system localized as a function of gamma, okay? This, the curves are for, the colors are for different values of the disorder and the symbols are for different system sizes. So we see the p log decreases exponentially with gamma, and the numerical data for different sites uh, rescale uh, one on top of the other if gamma is rescaled by L. Okay, so basically this means that this is the, the probability of finding. Yes? 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 
No, because I didn't take this order on the layer. So it's fully delocalized. On the layer, it's fully delocalized. But fully delocalized. There is no disorder in the layer. So a particle I on a site, it can travel freely, diffusively, completely freely within a layer. And then it can jump to the next, and there are uh, random energies to jump from one to the next. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there is no transition in the layer. Actually, th this is an extension of the model, taking layers with different disorders. So some of the layers can be in the localized space, and some on the... Is, fi is fixed. I know, yeah, because it doesn't depend on, uh, on M. It depends only on... Uh, oh, sorry. So I don't want to keep it fixed because, as you see, as I, I will increase the size of the chain, I, I will have localization if I, if I keep gamma fixed. So the, band, uh, the, the bandwidth of the perturbation is proportional to gamma square root of K, but I want this to, to reduce with the size of the chain. To otherwise, I always have the localization. As you see, you see from the plot, Okay, so uh, basically this is the probability, but there is not a sharp transition. So it's an exponential, there is, there is a coexistence for, for each size. There is a coexistence between, uh, with a certain probability, there is a continuous probability from zero to one of finding an insulating system or a, or a conducting one. Okay, a and, and, uh, and the probability of finding an insulating segment is, a segment is given by this expression. Uh, so uh, thi this the, the fact f an exponential distribution of locali of localized inclu inclusion is just a distinctive feature of the Griffith phase, and uh, and uh, uh, this gamma c hat here just the characteristic scale. It's not the transition point, but just a characteristic scale over which the localization occurs, and the it's plot here. And uh, maybe it's surprising. It has a strongly non-monotonic dependence with the disorder, but this can be explained easily just by recalling that the localization occurs due to the hybridization of the single particle under some lo localized unperturbed level. And so basically in the strong disorder limit, which we already discussed, uh, so uh, again function, unperturbed again function are strongly localized on some specific position of the chain. And localiza the localization occurs when the edges of neighboring semicircles starts to superpose. Uh, so this gives this estimation for the characteristic scale of gamma to have the localization, while in the weak disorder limit, there is a bare localization length, which is very, very low, very becomes very large. So the system can be thought as composed by L over xi naught blocks of average si uh, size xi naught, which are localized, insulating, and these blocks can mix due to the GOE perturbation if the width of the perturbation is of the order of the distance in energy of these blocks, and this gives this other estimation, which is in one over W square, and these two estimations are plotted here as a dashed line, and you see that it reproduce fairly well. They account for the numerical, uh, they account for the numerical uh, results. So in, anyway, in both cases, uh, as, as we can imagine intuitively, the, the scale for the transition to happen is of order of one over L, of the length of the chain, because we are, th we in if we increase the length of the chain, we are keeping putting new levels, so at a certain point they will overlap. So in order to, uh, to define, to draw a phase diagram, we define a new control parameter, which is this exponent phi, um, which basically tells us how fast this GOE, the strength of the GOE perturbation decreases with the length of the chain. And, and this is the phase diagram in the plane uh, phi uh, 1 over L. So in the thermodynamic, I mean, thermodynamic limit in the x direction, so for infinite chains, the system is insulating with probability one for phi larger, phi larger than one and conducting with probability one for phi smaller than one. But then at intermediate for finite L, there is a huge, a broad intermediate region where arbitrary large, meaning of the size of the system, conducting and insulating segment can coexist. And these curves are the point where p -lock that we computed uh, in the previous slides, here this p -lock, so um, these curves give the point where p log becomes smaller than delta on the delocalized phase and larger than one minus delta in the delocalized phase with delta small, say 10 to the power minus two, minus three, and minus four. Okay, now of course, all these lines uh, merge into the critical point. Still at the critical point, one can fine tune the value of p log uh, just by ch changing this value of gamma hat here. 
Okay? So in a certain sense, the, this phase diagram is somehow remis reminiscent of the power law random band matrix, and, and the scaling of the GV perturbation also reminiscent of the Rosenzweig uh, Porter uh, random matrix model, but the nature of the, under of the, the localization transition is completely different. Okay, so now let's we start to focus on the behavior of the intermediate uh, phase, in particular the critical point. So we set phi equal to one, and uh, the first thing that we look at is the uh, dissipation propagation, the statistics of this propagation. So in order to do that, we, we set eta, the imaginary regulator eta, equal uh, identically equal to zero on all the position of the chain, except on the first site here, where we put a source of dissipation, local source of dissipation, and we study. We solve the equation with this profile, and we study how this dissipation propagates through the system. So uh, these are the values of the parameters, W4 and gamma hat equal 2, and different colors correspond just to different realization of the disorder. So for these values of the parameter, P, P log is al about one half, so half of the samples will be in the localized, will be insulators, a, a half of the samples will be, will be conducting. So these are the insulator insulating samples. Uh, for those, mg, this is mg as a function of the position uh, along the chain. mg just d drops exponentially, just as a normal uh, Anderson insulator in 1D, just uh, the decreases exponentially fast over a typical uh, localization length scale uh, until reaching the very small value in the center of the system. And, and the others are the conducting samples, which actually look very similar to the insulating ones. The only difference is that they are made of patchworks of insulating bits, insulating segments, large insulating bits, and er few uh, rare resonances. So we look, for instance, at this red, uh, the, the sample corresponding to the red curve. Th this is, we can clearly identify three insulating segments separated by two resonances or thermal inclusions, quote unquote. So in the in this in these insulating segments, mg just goes down exponentially over the exactly the same localization length, the typical one, but then it finds a resonances uh, and uh, mg goes back to values of order one, and then it uh, one it, it comes again and again. Okay, so again, this is very very similar to the idea of the avalanche mechanism, according to which few or a sparse network of few thermal spots are ab is able to delocalize the whole system. Okay, so a related property uh, is the property of correlation functions between two points at distance x on the chain, uh, so defined by this object. So basically this is just a spectral representation, say, of the probability that a particle that sta starts on a site i at time zero is found at infinite time at distance x from the starting point, uh, given just by this off diagonal uh, element of the green function, which can be just written as a product along the path between i and i plus six of the diagonal elements of the cavity green function and the, the full green function in the at the end. So since we expect that actually correlations will be dominated by rare regions, we, bo we, mes we measure both typical and average ones. And, uh, uh, and, and the numerical results are given here. So the, the same values of the parameter as before, averaged over several realizations of, of the disorder and for several system sizes. So, and we see indeed that they behave strikingly differently. In particular, typical correlation just go to zero exponentially over the uh, typical localization length psi typical, while uh, uh, average correlations decrease much slower and are actually described by, or, or at least can be fitted as stretched exponential exponentials with an exponent df. And this feature was already observed in the numerical uh, studies of the RG coarse grained effective models and was interpreted in terms of a fractal uh, structure of, uh, of the thermal inclusions and uh, um, and basically, uh, uh, this exponent uh, df here that we extract from by fitting our uh, numerical results, uh, we plot here, and this plot shows how it evolves with the length of the chain, and we indeed find that it slowly 
very slowly but systematically decreases with the system size, which is precisely is the very same behavior which was found uh, in the numerical uh, studies of the simplified uh, RG, RG models, which have the costly set towers uh, like uh, type of of, uh, of criticality. Uh, so also because of the fact there is this general argument that says that present when the localization is driven by avalanches, one expects a, ca a kind of KT-like uh, KT -like, uh, critical behavior. We conjecture that also in the present model, this DF will eventually go to zero for infinite, uh, for infinite chains, although finite size effects are still very strong for the size that we can average in handle. Uh, yet, and also this is expected for the KT transition when one knows on general ground that finite size effects are uh, extremely strong. Um, I didn't try. I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, we, one, one can try, but then I will show the next slide where mm, I think that it's a different scenario. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, so another feature is that typical correlation, okay, this is different, for instance, this typical correlation do not depend on the system size, while, uh, so they, they if, you, if I take different size, they all superpose, uh, oops. So the oops, it's uh, it doesn't work. Ah yes. So the typical correlation length. Uh, this is this plot shows how the typical correlation length depends on the disorder. It just grows uh, as uh, basically one over W square, and it's just proportional to xi naught and finite. While average correlations grow, so it means that they become stronger and stronger when the length of the chain is increased. And all this can be understood just by looking at the probability distribution of correlation at a fixed distance, which, 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 uh, which is the object which is shown in this, in, this, in this plot. So this is the probability distribution at a fixed di distance of the correlation function. Okay? And this plot shows clearly that it becomes broadly distributed with a typical value in exponential minus 6 over psi typical and power low tails uh, described by an exponent 3 alpha. So this uh, curves, continuous curve with different colors correspond to different system sizes. Increasing the system size, we clearly see that the power law regime extends to larger and larger values of the correlation. And these dashed curves are just given size, but changing the distance, which basically has the only effect of shifting to the left or to the right, uh, depending on whether x is smaller or larger than the previous one. The whole distribution, but without modifying the properties of the distribution. Okay, so. Uh, basically, uh, again, this means that the typical uh, localization length at the critical point uh, is just finite, uh, proportional to xi naught. So it means that the critical point is typically in the localized space. If I take two points at random, the only effect of the gamma perturbation is to renormalize perturbatively the bare localization length. But uh, um, uh, the average correlation diverges uh, due to the presence of rare, uh, rare, uh, few rare resonances where correlation can become arbitrarily strong. And, and so if we assume now a distribution of localization length, just by changing variables, we trivially find that it's also, just to be consistent with this, this also needs to be broadly distributed with the typical value xi naught, finite, at the transition at the critical point, at power low tails with an exponent minus two, which was also, was, was observed in the numerical RG studies of, um, so all in all, I would say that the, all this, the picture that emerged of the critical point this model is fully consistent with the one emerging from the RG study, fully consistent with the KT-like uh, picture put forward recently to describe um, the MBL uh, transition. Okay, so now uh, I will focus on, yes? What a uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. 
No, my xi naught uh, it's uh, given by the value of the disorder that I have in the model. I mean, it's me that decide the value of xi naught by, yeah. No, but this is this is the length, the internal length that they add in the RG flow, which is the minimal length needed to thermalize into this spot, which is not this length. This is just the bare this is a bare parameter of the Hamiltonian C not. It's not uh, something which is nothing to do with the critical behavior. It's from the it's even from gamma equal to zero, I have a C not. It's just the bare value. It's like a bare parameter of the Hamiltonian, which do not flow under RG, just just there from the start. And then C typically it flows. I mean, it, 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 I mean, flows in the sense that when I turn on gamma per perturbation, just pertur by perturbation, typical sites, I have a small renormalization of Okay, but, but just it, it, it ends up to a certain point, and then the average correlation critical point diverge just because there are few rare resonances in this probability. So, I, I mean, I, I try to do the connection with their, their two mm, parameter flow RG, but I'm not sure of, uh, yeah, we can discuss, discuss later. Okay, okay. So just uh, transport, uh, di di transport uh, and dynamics of this model. Uh, so um, we just look at uh, study now the behavior of observables that have been that have been uh, introduced and, um, and to as probe of the anomalous dynamics in the bed metal phase. Uh, so we take a, a starting uh, state uh, time zero. So just a particle sitting uh, on a site I P. P is just randomly chosen in the layer among 1M, and I chosen in such a way that uh, on-site energy of the layer is uh, small, close to zero, so close to the middle of the band, so meaning high temperature initial state. And then we let this wave function evolve, and this is the wave function at time t, just in terms of eigenfunction and eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. And we measure the return probability, which is the probability that the particle at time t stays on layer I, the mean square displacement, which is the average square distance traveled by the particle between zero and t. And uh, from exact generalization, we can also measure the AC optical conductivity that Igor uh, uh, mentioned this morning. Uh, um, we just take a linear uh, response and uh, Lehman representation. Uh, so get this expression in the limit of very high temperature. And this, this is the current operator. This is ju just the current in the x direction. So this is the operator is obtained by continuity equation only in the x direction. Okay, so these are the numerical results. Uh, these are obtained by from exaggeration of small uh, sizes, smaller samples of uh, 36 layers. And the disorder, I increased it with respect to the previous slide just because I want that the bare localization length is much smaller than the size of the chain. And uh, uh, okay, so the di these different colors here uh, correspond just to different values of gamma, so different values of the exponent phi, and are precisely these points here uh, uh, spotted on the phase diagram. So they are ju just, we are just now moving across this intermediate, uh, say, Griffith phase. Okay, and so uh, we observe that the time of order xi naught, as we already heard this morning, uh, the square mean square displacement, gro uh, uh, square displacement grows ballistically until the wave the wave packet spreads um, to the bare localization length xi naught. Uh, this dashed line, black dashed line here, just uh, the gamma equal to zero, so pure Anderson insulator, just to use as a benchmark. So the wave packet spreads ballistically up, up to xi naught, xi, xi naught and the return probability decreases exponentially to the inverse participation ratio of unperturbed Anderson localized levels in the middle of the spectrum. And then at later time, this gamma perturbation sets in and uh, dynamics become clearly shows all the feature, the slow dynamics and power low behavior, uh, subdiffusivity strikingly similar to those observed in recent uh, experiment and, uh, and uh, simulations. Uh, of uh, closed in the bed metal phase preceding the MBL transition. And so in particular, uh, the mean square displacement grows uh, subdiffusively, uh, return probability goes to zero as a power low, and uh, the current vanishes uh, zero frequency in, the in this intermediate phase as an anomalous power low. And all these exponents uh, vary continuously when uh, gamma or phi 
is varied across intermediate phase, and these are the values of the exponent that we just extract from the fits. And, and uh, okay, so we, they, we expect that they should be related by some scaling relation. So, um, in particular, if one assumes uh, just um, uh, that in the, in the diffusive regime or the sub-diffusive sub regime at a long time, packet is motion, one expects that uh, the, the return probability should be at one over square root of mean square displacement, so beta prime should be equal to beta, and we can also define a time effective diffusion coefficient in this way, and this is just the so sigma, and so one expects the scaling relation between alpha and beta, and, and so we observe that this scaling relation alpha plus beta equal to one is nicely satisfied within our accuracy, while beta prime and beta are not equal, and uh, I don't know if it's finite size effect or it's due to the fact that the wave packet is not Gaussian. And we also measure the whole probability distribution of resistivities, uh, and which becomes increasingly broad at low frequency, uh, and approaches a power law with an exponent O, meaning that the variance of the resistivity diverges uh, at the critical point, say so. This means, uh, this is also what uh, a characteristic feature of this Griffith phase, and so, since I think I ran out of time, this is just the conclusions and, uh, and uh, some perspective for future for future work. Thank you very much.